I have been waiting for this, I know some of you have been waiting for this. Today we're gonna be reviewing Fly, or F-L-Y at Fantasialand. Now first off, what does that name mean? What does F-L-Y stand for? I don't fucking know. Apparently it's claimed to stand for a flying launch coaster, but last time I checked, coaster didn't start with Y. Do you know how to spell? <laughs> But let's just call it Fly. Now, Fly's place at the park is basically their newest masterpiece. It is the big central attraction in the Ruckburg area that is part of the larger Berlin area. And it is a huge reason why people love the park and visit in the first place. Fly is overall a world-renowned ride known for its launches, its very clever technological ride systems, and its otherworldly immersive theming experience. And also airtime, actually, which is really fun to mention on a flying coaster. I wrote this coaster in July of 2022, and let's talk about some of this technical stuff about it. Come fly with me, let's fly. So according to RCDB, Fly is a flying Dutchman model, like the old-fashioned ones. What? But Vekoma themselves mark it as a different model, simply known as a flying coaster. So according to Vekoma themselves, this is a one-of-a-kind, a standard Vekoma flying coaster, with launches, of course. It opened in 2020 after years of anticipation, and it features 20 rider trains over 10 rows. But because of the seat arrangement, the train looks and feels a lot longer than just 10 rows. And when it comes to the comfort, it kind of depends on yourself. You see, obviously this ride has vest restraints, and the system is so smart that the vests actually lock, but you can make sure that you have a lot of room in the vest so they don't feel tight, they don't choke you, if you make sure to push them a little bit up before they lock in, and that way you can have a very comfortable ride. I figured that out on my second ride. On your legs, you also have a super cool system where you put your legs into these, I don't know, things. Hey, Vsauce, Michael here. I can't really explain it, guys, but the, I mean, the comfort on this coaster is pretty cool. While this is my only flying coaster I've done, I can imagine this might just be the most comfortable flying coaster out there because of how the, all the restraints work. I will say though that hanging on the brake run with these restraints is not my biggest cup of tea. A problem that I definitely did have with the comfort of this coaster might just be a problem with flying coasters themselves and I think that maybe flying is not my favorite position. A big reason of that being the fact that I can't really look forward. My first ride was on the front row but every time I try looking forward I either hurt my neck or my eyes so in order to be comfortable doing the ride you kind of just have to look down and then that way you don't have the thrill of seeing where you're going and you don't get the full flying experience in my opinion instead it just feels like you're being flown around by a giant eagle <laughs> That does make the layout more surprising, but again, I do have problems with it regarding comfort. But nonetheless, the coma did an excellent job here. Now, Fly doesn't actually have an official height. It's never been released how tall this coaster is, but if I were to guess, I would say around 82 feet tall. Again, a completely fabricated guess. But at least we do know how long it is. It is 4,055.1 feet long, which is the third longest coaster in the park after Tahon and Colorado Adventure. And it's also the longest flying coaster in the world. Holy shit! On top of that, it also goes 48.5 miles an hour, which is a really solid speed and perfectly fit for the layout, which we'll get into later. The ride duration of the ride itself is a minute and seven seconds long, but it is pretty hard to determine without an on-ride POV. There's not a single legal on-ride POV of this ride out there at all, so that is roughly estimated off of off-ride shots. And finally, Fly has two inversions. Now, they are classified as corkscrews, both of them, but I actually see one of the inversions as something else. And again, we'll We'll get into that later. Perfect. Everything. Down to the last minute details. Starting off by just talking about how Fly looks, I mean, it, it, it just looks incredible. Walking into Ruckburg itself is an incredible experience and the presentation is immaculate. There is track everywhere. The color of the coaster is beautiful and matches the rest of the area perfectly. And just watching the ride is a phenomenon in itself. Filming it is almost a mythical experience because if you think it's tough knowing where Tagon is going, this is way harder. Yeah, ain't I won't come in. <laughs> Partially due to all the structures in between the track and throughout the area, it is almost impossible knowing where the hell this is going. Let's face it, Mr. Frodo. We're lost. But all in all, this is simply one of the greatest rides to just look at and watch off-ride. It's quite possibly the best ride I've ever seen. Absolutely incredible off-ride experience all the way. Probably you fools. 
All right, so me talking about the layout here is gonna be a little bit different from how I usually do it. Usually I go through the layout and I explain the forces of every element we meet on the way. I cannot do that here, first of all, because there's no on right POV, and second of all, because the layout is super complicated, hard to even look at, and it's just almost impossible to memorize this layout. We are. A species with amnesia. So what I will do instead is I will go through the actual elements that are in the layout via an off-right POV, I will mention every element and then afterwards I will talk about all the forces, how often they occur, how many dead spots there are, generally how this ride feels and how intense it is, and how good the layout is overall. I'm at least confident that I remember it well enough. So starting up with a layout walkthrough, we start up with the pre-show, again we'll talk about that later, then the seats twist in this amazing way, like seen on the prototype here. Who are you? Who are so wise in the ways of science? And then we hit the first launch. After the first launch is an overbank that follows into the first inversion on the right, the corkscrew, which is followed by an outer bank bunny hill similar to those found on 453 models of their suspended family coasters. Then we have a simple turnaround which heads into a small twisted drop followed by a small twisted hill. It's almost like a twisted double down of some sort. After that is a curved drop and turnaround, which is followed by an overbank, then you have the small zigzag section where it heads back and forth from side to side before it turns into the second launch. Oh! The second launch then heads upwards while it's launching, which throws you into the camelback of the ride. Then swooping down from the camelback is a 270 degree helix, which heads right into an overbank similar to the one again on the 453 models of their family suspended coasters. After this is a twisted hill that is followed by a small turn, a twisted bunny hill, another 270 degree helix, then there's a very sudden twisted drop that throws you underground and into the second inversion of the ride. Now this is classified as a corkscrew, but I actually personally classify it as a barrel roll down drop due to how it feels, and I'll explain that later when we talk about the forces. After the inversion is another overbank, and then you have the final twist into the final brake run, where you will hang in the flying position for a little while until you go a little further and you twist upright again. Alright, well that was a fucking journey. Ugh. Now let's talk about how this ride actually feels regarding the layout. First of all, I want to talk about the longitude forces, which occur on the launches. Now the launches are not too powerful at all, they're definitely weaker, <laughs> but they do have an existing feeling of acceleration. You absolutely do feel the launches, and they have a great sense of speed and adventure as well, but they're not too forceful. You have no power here. <laughs> But again, I don't think they were meant to be necessarily on this flying coaster. A thing that Fly absolutely excels in though are the positive forces. They are a bunch of moment of positive forces on Fly and almost every single valley, every single turn and every single overbank, well not every single, but almost all of those have a pretty good strength of positive forces. This ride definitely feels forceful and like an intense ride because of these positive forces and you get heavily pushed into your vest restraint and it feels amazing and really odd as well, so this ride definitely does not lack intensity in the department of positive forces. Again, they're at a good strength, I'm buff, <laughs> and they happen all the time. The force that this ride is most known for, of course, is airtime, which first of all is incredibly weird on an invert, but on a flying coaster it's pretty much unheard of. What? And yet Fly has a shitload of moments of airtime. Pretty much every single drop and hill has airtime, and it's not a weak weightlessness of floater airtime. It is strong floater, and it's very sudden as well. It's almost flojector in several moments where you quickly pop out of your vest into the back of your seat, and it feels surprising and really fun every single time. There is also one moment of actual proper ejector on the ride. Not even weaker ejector, I would say it's proper mid ejector, and that is on the camelback right after the second launch if you sit in the front row. Now my first ride was in the front row, and this caught me way off guard. You absolutely get launched out of your seat on this hill in the front row, and even further back in the train, you still get some great floater airtime. Some moments are definitely also more sudden than others, especially the drop right before the final inversion. That has very strong floater to flejector airtime that is again really
really fucking sudden. And when I think about it, pretty much all the airtime moments catch you completely off guard. And that's a big reason why they feel so fucking fun every single time. This is absolutely an airtime machine, which is crazy to think about for a flying coaster, but Fly does it insanely well. And most of the moments are also twisted and bring on some laterals. Now, Fly overall does not have any strong laterals, but the twisted hills and drops do feature quick sideways movements of the body that are really fun. Typically, laterals aren't really what you remember from riding Fly, but you do feel those sudden bursts, which are a pretty fun experience. The final force I want to talk about is hang time, and there are two moments of hang time on Fly. And generally, I'm just going to talk about the inversions now. The first inversion, the corkscrew, is incredibly floaty. It's actually hard to say whether or not I will really call it hang time or just immense floatiness. <laughs> But nonetheless, this is one of the best corkscrews I've experienced. It is insanely floaty and fun. The weightlessness is super strong. And you can call me a fucking garden gnome. But this inversion feels magical. Definitely my favorite inversion of the two on the ride. The second corkscrew, which is what I call a barrel down drop, is also very hang timey and also feels very odd. The reason I classified it as a barrel down drop is because when it twists upside down, it's already heading downwards. And therefore, you also feel some forward hang time. You feel hang time in general upwards like airtime, but you also feel like you're being slightly pushed forward as if you're hanging with your head down, which on a flying coaster is weird. But generally, yeah, this feels more like a barrel roll down drop than a corkscrew, and it's a great inversion, especially heading into the tunnels of the layout, and while also getting a solid dose of whip if you're near the back row. So this inversion can feel intense. And that is generally all I have to say about the layout and the forces of fly. As you can hear, I mean, it is incredibly hard to describe every single moment on fly but I do remember how it is overall. It's a very forceful layout, it's super airtime packed, the inversions are great, and I basically have no complaints about the layout. No real dead spots, no long periods of boredom. There may be a few overbangs here and there that don't necessarily do too much, but because of the flying position and the feeling of flying, who cares? I don't care. Because it still feels super fun because of that and the location over the pathways and the theming and everything. And that's exactly what we'll get into as well with the pacing category. I can show you the now, one of the funny things about Fly's pacing is how slow it seems when you observe it off-ride. It does not look like it's moving very fast at all and kind of crawls through the layout when you look at it. But I can promise you that on-ride, it does not feel slow at all. It doesn't necessarily feel too fast either though. I would actually say that the speed feels very fitting and just right. It also feels like you move at the same speed through the entire layout. Like it feels like the speed is just constant almost all the time. Almost like it's a powered coaster. I've never thought about this until now, but Fly almost feels like a powered coaster. But it fits perfectly with a layout. It is a great thing. Nonetheless, it never feels like it slows down. It never feels too slow in certain sections, even though it also doesn't feel like a speed machine in any sections outside of the launches. The launches definitely do have a great sense of speed compared to the rest of the layout, but that makes sense. And of course, after both launches, you head up into a tall element, and then the speed kind of stays consistent after that. The elements also keep being great and equal throughout the entire layout. I wait all week for the fucking equalizer! Meaning that you never really feel like the elements are getting weaker and weaker. You feel like you feel the same forces throughout pretty much the entire layout, which is also great for pacing. So overall, I have no complaints about Fly's pacing. I would actually say it has some of the most consistent pacing of any coaster I've ever ridden. He went over a bump or something. Hey, the car ain't hit no motherfucking bump. For smoothness, I'm gonna keep this pretty pretty fucking short, because just like Phoenix as well as Untamed, this bitch is as smooth as smooth gets. Essentially, this fucker is as smooth as the Great Pyramids of Giza at the dawn of their creation. It is absolutely perfectly smooth, there are no complaints, no rattle, no vibrations, nothing. It feels completely smooth. That's all you had to say! It pretty much could not get any smoother, and riding it should essentially just classify as ice skating. Well, we all know this is a big part of Fly Shine. This is simply one of the most well-themed roller coasters on Earth. First of all, Fly is themed to a flying machine in the insane steampunk world of Ruckburg in Berlin. Entering Ruckburg in general is like entering Diagon Alley in Harry Potter or going through a portal. Seeing the structures and the theming and the track for the first time is absolutely insane and it's everywhere. There's something to look at absolutely everywhere and some of these details are even in motion. For example, the steam meter that goes off when the train rolls by. It literally cannot get any more steampunk than Ruckburg. 
even some odd things like these massive holes of coal in them feel like an industry of some sort. I am gonna be spoiling some things about the queue in the station. Not that there's anything immensely insane, but if you want this to be a first time experience, skip ahead. Entering the queue, first of all, feels great as you go up the stair and it feels like a proper entrance. Right away, you're gonna see a bunch of posters that also feel very 1930-ish. And basically going through the queue line almost feels like you're entering a flight in a super old airport on some flying island of steampunkness, I guess. Even the air balloon things here and there, it really adds to that aesthetic. There are also small contraptions, basically just screaming Leonardo da Vinci everywhere. Welcome to Planet Vinci. Even though they're essentially made of copper looking materials and not of wood. And simply said, they're just details throughout the entire queue line. Blueprints, the small courtyard here that feels like it's taken straight out of Kino da Toten in Black Ops 1 Zombies. Small rooms that look really official and again like something out of the Titanic. <laughs> or some sort of high-class airship. There's the workshop as well, with more coal adding to that industry feeling, and then you go underground into the station. You get into this huge dark room with massive oval screens with backstories, and everything is just so freaking immersive, it's bonkers. And then after this, you get to the lockers, and there's nothing I can show in this video after this point, because it is not allowed to bring any cameras or anything after this point. That's one of the reasons there's no on right POV, at least no legal ones. But to go through briefly after this point are the metal detectors that also do match the flying theme so they don't feel out of place at all and then the station just has amazing details everything looks amazing as to the steam park theme there are pipes with glowing fluids inside of them and there's just so much more to talk about in there it's just one of my favorite stations of all time and that's about all i can say since i can't show nothing the ride experience also starts out with an amazing pre-show in a room that feels way bigger than it should be considering how small it looks book is. Like the pre-show area feels insanely huge and the show itself is great as well as the music which just blasts throughout this ride which is also incredible. Then you fly into Rookbook and of course experience all the things that you can also see off-ride but there are also some details you wouldn't capture off-ride in the same way especially due to how many near misses there are. You get very close to the walls all the time and it feels absolutely real like you're actually flying through the area. I mean overall the theming of fly man Fuck me, holy shit, this is amazing. <laughs> the theming of Fly is just fucking wild, and it is the best themed ride in the park, if you ask me. Due to some of the many things that this ride has that other rides such as Tagon just doesn't have. I don't think I have much more to add to the theming right now unless you go ride it yourself, and obviously you should do that, so let's talk about how I overall feel about Fly. Come on, Mr. Daly. Things are about to get interesting. This ride features an amazingly complete and very unique layout for a flying coaster with great forces, a bunch of funky airtime and twists, including two excellent inversions and a fantastic sense of truly flying through the incomprehensible world that is Hookbook. It is one of the most spectacular roller coasters experiences on the planet, and this ride has not been overrated or overhyped at all if you ask me. Now, it is not an absolute favorite of mine, and the reason for that is generally about the comfort and the fact that the flying position is not an absolute favorite sensation of mine. I definitely prefer sitting down on a coaster and experiencing a ride like that for the most part, but I'm not gonna let that affect the final score. I'm gonna give Fly exactly what it fucking deserves, which is the highest score I can give a 10 plus out of 10. Despite it not being my absolute preference, there's no way around the fact that Fly is a perfect ride in every sense of the word, and I was still mind blown when I wrote this ride. It's been a huge question for me ever since I wrote it where it ranks for me in the park but also overall regarding coasters and other rides. I found it to be a mind-blowing but questionable experience for me personally but after having thought more and more about it afterwards I just can't wait to ride it again. This is an absolutely incredible ride experience. You cannot miss out on this if you go to Germany for roller coasters or generally theme parks because Fantasialand is simply an insane piece of art in itself. So what do you guys think about Fly? Have you ridden it or not? Nonetheless, I would love to hear what you think about it prior to or after having ridden it. Just tell me anything about this coaster or even other flying coasters for that matter. I want to thank you so much for watching this review. This was a blast to make. That's all I have to say. Otherwise, bye! <laughs>